Welcome to this introductory video about parallel C synthesis with Xanax Vitis HLS. In this video, we'll go over the basics of HLS, we'll run a short demo of the tool, loading a project, validating a C function, and synthesizing it to hardware. Vitis HLS maps abstracted algorithms onto a Xanax device. The user enters portable C code with compiler pragmas to generate an IP block that can be used in the Vivado flow or as a kernel for the Vitis flow. Using task parallelism coding style supported through the data flow directive or possibly vector data types and streams, the user obtains an optimized circuit. The tool helps perform a C simulation prior to C synthesis to validate the functionality of the design, then run synthesis followed by a post synthesis simulation using the actual result of C synthesis during that last stage of verification. In HLS, the main of the C program drives the test vectors to the function. So in this example, foo would become the function to verify and synthesize to hardware. After I launched the tool for this workthrough, I used the clone examples option to access one of the code examples that are linked to GitHub from the welcome screen. I then select open example project. We select loop pipeline. Once the project opens, you see three solutions, which are variations of settings for the design. Opening the C source, we see that the example shows nested loops of size 20 that access an array defined as a top function argument called A. Since this array is a top port, it means that it's a memory external to the function. We are about to validate and synthesize. The function itself accumulates the value read from that external memory into a variable called ACK. If we browse to what's presented on the left-hand side, we also see a tickle script and a tickle directive file that assigns a pipeline constraint to different level of the nested loops to experiment with different results. Making solution 1 active in the solution settings, I'm going to change the device and the target frequency. I'm choosing a Vertex Ultrascale Plus with the VU9P, and for the period, I'll pick 5 nanosecond with an uncertainty of 0.5 nanosecond. The uncertainty represents a margin of the performance goal as far as your clock period or Fmax are concerned. It's a useful feature to calibrate the effort put by the tool to meet the constraint. As discussed, main is the test bench, and provided your project comes with one, it's displayed on the test bench folder. The test bench invokes the function to be checked, then it's often done against an alternate code implementation to verify the result to make it self-checking. In this example, the current results are compared to the actual result. Now let's run C simulation to perform the functional simulation, which again does not involve any RTL or result from C synthesis. It runs all the tests specified in main. Here it's done, and in the log we see the message printed from main that the test passed. Next, we'll run the actual C synthesis phase. Synthesis is at the heart of HLS. Once performed, it creates another representation of the C function using an hardware language. It creates both Verilog and VHDL. Once done, we can study the report and its many sections. Let's start with the performance to see that this example, the 5 nanosecond timing constraint is easily passing according to this estimate. The latency is about 400 cycles, which can be expected since we're pipelining the most inner loop and there are 20 times 20 iterations. So 400 clock cycles total at 200 MHz, reading 20 data points from an external RAM and storing the data multiplied by the loop indices into an accumulator called ACK. The report also confirms that the inner loop was pipelined. There is also a directive called unroll to flatten all operations in a loop, but here we can still get full throughput by executing one element at a time given that the data comes from an external memory. So in our current context, pipeline makes sense and we don't need to fully unroll the loop since we cannot read a full memory at once. Further down in the report, we see an interface section and since we left the port settings to the tool's default, we get the AP control HS and check for the block IOs and the AP memory protocol for our memory port. You can read more about those in the user guide of HLS. 
Once we've done the simulation and done with C synthesis, it's time to confirm that the results are correct for the generated RTL in what's called co-simulation. Co-simulation uses the C testbench test vectors of main to verify against the RTL code. So at this stage, HLS will involve an RTL simulator to run the verification. Once the design has completed, we see that the test passed in the log. So we are now done with C synthesis results checked with COSIM. The last step is to export the design so that it can be used in the Vivado tools. During that packaging step, we can also optionally have HLS invoke Vivado in the background to run the example into the actual backend flow. So here we just run the RTL synthesis stage to find out and refine our initial estimates for both performance and device utilization to see the actual numbers. At the end, we'll get a new report for performance and utilization. So it's now time to wrap up, and we went over an overall tool description to see how it can verify and synthesize the C code to an hour description, and even package the result into a format that Vivado, the backend, can consume. We then looked at several phases of the flow with C simulation, C synthesis, and co-simulation. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye. Thank you.